This episode is brought to you by our friends at Milwaukee Tools. Outdoor power equipment gives you the power to clear, cut, and maintain the outdoors without the petrol headaches. No pull starts, no engine maintenance, no mixing petrol and oil. Book a test drive now at milwaukeetools.com.au. Milwaukee, nothing but heavy duty. This episode is also brought to you by our friends at Rick's. Rick's is an Australian lifestyle brand founded with a mission to transform the eyewear industry by creating carefully crafted eyewear that inspires confidence. Everybody should be able to enjoy a touch of luxury and the confidence it brings. See the world differently today. Head online now at rickseyewear.com.au and check it out. Righto, let's get into the show. And the meatball is back in the studio. You know, last time I... Got the uh, Richmond fans a bit toey. I've got you on and they thought I'm going to get the meatball and it was all about the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's about time I came on, you know, <laughs> we've known each other for a long time. I thought, yeah, it's time to, uh, it's time to do one. Bring, I think. The, bring the big guns on late though. I was told mm. this, you got to warm up, you got to warm the crowd yeah. up and then uh, bring the big guns in. Yeah. I saw Timmy, Timmy Taranto was on it. So yeah. Yeah. A little bit of a Richmond vibe now. You boys it's are going to be humming next year. <laughs> Honestly, I was like when we had, when I was just sitting there getting into that footy mode. Hopper, you, Timmy, obviously you got mm. heaps of weapons that can play forward, back, wing. Um, you must be excited when you see blokes like that come to your footy club. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was uh, I was actually a part of their interviews when they came into the club. So, um, yeah, Timmy uh, Timmy was on the back of a Mad Monday. We asked <laughs> him, we're like, when did he come down? He's like, yeah, last night had me had our Mad Monday <laughs> yesterday. So I was like, oh, that's good effort, good effort to come down. And then- um, I wasn't really thinking that would get Hopper. I thought Hopper was um, Geelong there, at Geelong, yeah. And then um, I think it was during our exit interview um, week that we had. Um, yeah, ma- our um, ma- uh, team manager pretty much just called us and said, "Like, come in, Hopper. Hopper wants to interview." And we're like, oh, "All right." And then yeah, he got us. So got, they call all you leaders and all you guns and uh, say, "Let's let's present." Yeah, well. <clears throat> Uh, Hopper got Dusty in there, so that was uh, that was pretty impressive. Dusty wow. and Lynchy, so I think I think they might have the same manager as um, Toby, Nan Curvis and Lynchy, so they were in, and I was floating around the club, so I, I jumped in there as well. So saw so the presentation, um, yeah, it was a little bit different to when I when I got there the presentation, but um, a little upgrade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like two midfielders. This is this is juicy. <laughs> two absolute gun midfielders as well. So um, yeah, yeah, I didn't realize how how young. Um, Tim was, mm. you know, we played him in the grand final in 19. He was only third year, yeah. third year in that. He seems like he's just been around forever. I think it's just because we've had such good games against GWS. Um, I feel like he's just a bit older, but what, 24? Yeah, so. 24. And he's yeah, like, we call him the weapon. He's yeah, beast, the weapon. Man. He gets the weapon, I get the meatball. <laughs> <laughs> the all weapon, these, the meatball. All these nicknames going around, you know, buddy. <laughs> weapon the meatball so is like a meatball. so we've got the aces questions uh, and i thank everyone out there uh that always jumps in when i get a chance to like once i commit to a guest and i'll have a chance to quickly chuck something up for questions they dive in and um mate i've got a heap of questions coming right <laughs> so we do them at the end but the the one that was a common theme was the meatball <laughs> like so where do we start with it let's start with where'd it come from who gave it to you yeah so uh it started in my first year at the Gold Coast. Um, so I was drafted. I, I reckon when I was drafted, my weight would have been about 80 kilos, I reckon. So pro, for an 18-year-old get, getting drafted, it's pretty heavy, I feel. 175 centimetres. Your height. Height, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then our first year was, um, you know, first year plays, get in the gym, just smash weights. Like you do weights four or five times a week. And obviously I didn't need to do that. <laughs> So by, by the time preseason come around, um, you know, my diet wasn't, wasn't great as well. Like just naive, didn't really know how to really look after your body. I was just like eating way too much wrong things. And, um, I probably got out to about 86 kilos probably in my first year. And if you see a vision of my first year, I, I actually saw the other day, my first goal and I just look huge. I got a shaved head and, um, yeah, Michael Riscutelli. We we're just outside doing just a little touch kind of session. And um, he just started calling me the meatball, just like out of nowhere. It was just real random. And then um, our coach, Guy McKenna, he um, was talking to Brian Taylor. And um, I went I went to school with Brian, Brian's son, Jordan. Um, so he's second oldest. Uh, so I always had that 
personal connection with with BT and then um, he started calling me the meatball on, on, on one TV. of the games. In one of the games. The human just, meatball. Uh, human meatball. I think I was running down the wing um, playing playing Richmond actually and yeah, he just started calling me the meatball and every time I got the ball, he he would say, yeah, the human meatball and he would give reference to my to my old man. He would say, oh, um, big Aussie sitting at home, got gout or something like that, just pot him and <laughs> <laughs> things like that. So yeah, kind of just rolled, rolled from there. Um, yeah, so probably during my second second year and my third year, um, yeah, he just started calling me the meatball because everyone at the Gold Coast started calling me the meatball. So yeah, it's very. I reckon it's, it's, the, it's the best, mate. I still remember <laughs> it because I wouldn't have. Been, I hadn't been drafted yet, so you know you're living in the shadows then, and <laughs> you're at Gold Coast. But you weren't. It wasn't like you were. Um, you were getting a couple of kicks here and there. Like you were. You're getting a lot of the balls. So the human yeah. meatball was getting a fair <laughs> run from BT, and he loved it. Yeah, that's good. It's it's a. Uh, it's great when you go to clinics, like you go to school clinics or like there's kids and introduce yourself to all the players and it's, it's good like icebreaker for uh, for the kids. You say, oh, my nickname's the meatball and they just <laughs> like start laughing and then they can always come up to you and, and say that. But it's a bit weird when you get older men walking in the street calling you the meatball <laughs> or you're out, you're out somewhere having dinner or... Or you know, out, out in the town, and people are yelling out "meeple" to you. That's that's also a bit <laughs> that's a bit weird. I'm not sure about that. Free game pastor and uh, <laughs> someone's walking past meeple. meeple. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit it's a bit odd, but um, yeah, no, it is. Uh, so there's some feedback to all the uh, Richmond fans out there. If you see Dion having dinner and you're above what 20 years old. Don't yeah. be yelling at the meatball. Yeah, I think 20, maybe 25. We we'll give them that. We'll, we'll cop the 22 year olds. Oh mate, that's great. And BT's been massive for both of us. We um, we've already done a potty with BT and. Growing up, we're so lucky that, um, you know, we're great friends with Geordie and their family and we've, you know, they've looked after us. We've been to their beach houses and whatnot in summer growing up. But how cool has it been to have BT call games knowing that, you know, you've got a great relationship with him and he, he I mean, he helps a lot when you're near the ball. I mean, he, the excitement he gives to, when you get a kick, it's yeah. great, isn't it? Yeah, I, I just think he's not just because we know him, but I think he's such a good commentator. You know, um, he doesn't really, I feel like, have an opinion on like the play and stuff. He just calls it as it is. Um, I think that's why everyone loved like um, Bruce and Dennis committee and stuff, just cause they called it exactly how, how it was, you know, they didn't really have a opinion if someone missed a kick or missed a goal or something. And I reckon that's why everyone, um, everyone loves BT and he always gives, gives me a rap. And as I said before, he, um, he always pots dad and makes mention to <laughs> big, um, big Oz and he, he cops it. He works at the, um, the fruit market, the wholesale market. And it's just, um, he's like, mate, every time BT says something, I absolutely cop it in the market. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So if, uh, if BT hears this, maybe keep going because it's pretty <laughs> <Yeah>. funny. <laughs> How is Oz going? Uh, he's still in the yeah, fruit, is he still in the fruit game? Yep, yep. So, um, yeah. So he he's always been in the fruit game since he since he was a kid. So his um, dad pretty much brought in when he was at Footscray, and um, he worked there forever. So they sold the business, I think, about seven or eight years ago. Um, and he he just works at another company in the same same industry. So. Um, yeah, he's lost, lost a lot of weight. Big Has Oz. He? Yeah. He's lost about 50 kilos. Wow. Um, big so, Oz. Shout out. Yeah. Shout out. So yeah, it's pretty funny. You see, you see, uh, photos from a couple of years ago and he just looks like, he looks like he's like doing it on purpose, like blowing his face <laughs> up or something. So, um, yeah, no, nah, he, he's, he's going really well. Um, hopefully they retire soon and yeah. Start, start relaxing and enjoying, <laughs> enjoying That's 50 it. Fifty kilos, mate. That's yeah, a huge effort. Huge, like, yeah. Can I just ask, what was the shift? What, why, and and how do you do it? So, that's uh, a lot of weight. Uh, well, he had a bit of help. Got the uh, got the band yep. done, but um, yeah, just yeah, he um, yeah, he just needs to do it. Mm. Health health wise, just um. Yeah, just a bit, bit too big, too much, uh, too much pasta. Probably too growing up, <laughs> <laughs> growing up. But um, yeah, no, nah, he just kind of was pretty, pretty hard for the first couple months because you really can't eat anything at all and liquids and stuff. But um, mum absolutely loved it because she loves cooking, as uh, as you would know, and a lot of, a lot of the friends growing up would know. The best schnitzels uh, in the world. <laughs> <the best laughs> the, the, in the world. I'm surprised your nickname wasn't Sitzel. <laughs> like, honestly, um, yeah. So she was able to, able to do that, but um. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's real good. Mum, mum's an absolutely amazing cook. I remember, um, you know, having been, been going to school at Assumption, we always had had boarders come down, and um, the boarders would stay over at our house for the weekend, and they would just have this huge feast. I still go back there now, and it'll be mum, 
mum and dad and myself for lunch and she'll cook for like 10 of us. I'm just like, why do you cook? Yeah. Why do we have four different meals on the table for mum? Like, it's like, oh, I didn't know who was coming. I didn't know if you were going to bring someone. She's I'm like, the best. yeah, and then, um, yeah, it's great. You know, I always had schnitzel sandwiches growing up and the boarders would raid me, raid me lunchbox because <laughs> um, they, they would pretty much got starved every single day. So, um, yeah, it's good. It's a great way to, to connect. We still feel the same. I like Food's a great way to connect with friends and, and meet people. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much all we did when we were younger. There was always someone over or someone um, come around for Christmas just because it's a huge, huge feast. And, um, yeah, it's good. It's good it's been, fun. You've been a great Christmas. host. Like, even growing up, I think we've had the grand final parties when we were growing up, when we were younger. Yeah. Like, I would have been 18, 19. Um, this is when we, you know, when we yeah. both weren't near the finals. And then you've thrown a couple of house parties. We'll blame Cammy for that. <laughs> big, big shout out to Camden Holmes, the king. Uh, that's his. It, but you, you're a great host. It obviously comes from, you know, the way you've been brought up. Because you're right. When we go around for a feed, I mean, I, I wasn't as lucky as the Assumption boys. I probably ran every week. But, um, yeah, it's a great spread. Yeah, it was even, even coming back from the Gold Coast, you know, like when we get weekend off, it was just like, hey, boys, I'm in town. Who's coming? And there'd be five or six extras. And then- my, I've got two sisters as well and they would probably bring some friends over. So sometimes we would have like 12 people at home and <laughs> yeah. it would be mum pretty much. And my, my older sister is a really, really good cook as well, Chanel. Um, and yeah, that would just, it was so easy for them to cook like for 12 people and stuff every, every single night or every weekend when I was, when I was back or, um, you know, when I, when I was on the Gold Coast, I'd come home obviously and just say if we went on an, on a night out, get home back to Craigieburn after a long taxi ride home oh, from the city. <laughs> I didn't think about it. It cost about 200 bucks. And <laughs> like, I remember, I remember one night me, me and Stephen May um, came down and we we're staying at mine in, in Craigieburn. And I think we got home at like two o'clock or two thirty, and mum woke up and I was like, mum, mum, can you cook some pasta for us? <laughs> and Maisie was just like, no, 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 don't worry. You don't have to do that. She's like, no, 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 I will. And he was just sitting there like at the kitchen table after a night out, just like pissing himself, just thinking like, who does this? Yeah. Like, and we was like sitting there at 2.30 in the morning after a night out, just eating pasta. Like it's oh, so, it's, it's so good. Yeah. yeah oh, so. it's great. There, there, there's some great memories growing up. Back to growing up, Assumption, talk to us about the, um, because obviously we've had, we've had a few Assumption boys on now and. Um, yeah, some of the uh, Ray Carroll uh, stories. Spocky, yeah. Spock. Yeah, Spock. Yeah. Yeah, some of Spocky <laughs> stories from TA Tony Armstrong, like yeah. maybe <laughs> had me in tears. Like the one where he's ordering, he's ordering fast food. I can't remember what chain it was, but it was McDonald's or KFC, and he's talking to the rubbish box, the ru- <laughs> the, the rubbish bin. Sorry, like is there some cl- like classic stories you've got that come front of mind and not um, only just him, but just growing up, you had some great people in your life that are still there all from the yeah. footy culture. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was really, it was a really good, um, I don't know, kind of like in a way, cause it was a private school. It was still like kind of a humbling place. Like, you, you know, we got, we got a lot of the country boys from Victoria country, New South Wales, um, and they were obviously boarders and it was just like, it was just fun, like to be at school. Like everyone was, um, like we're kind of not isolated, but it's a long way out of Kilmore. Like mm. it's a hour, hour and a half from the city, um, in Melbourne. So, um, yeah, it was just, it was just like, I know we were just like really close. Even like the day students, I, I, I wasn't a boarder, I, I was a day student and yeah, we're just really close. And so all my closest friends are the guys that I went to school with and, and boarders and um yeah like we would have saturday saturday afternoon football sometimes we'd travel from kilmore down to the peninsula school it'd be like a three-hour trip leave leave school at nine o'clock get there at 12 get home at seven o'clock like that night and we'll like literally every single day kind of together kind of similar to to what it is now and we just had like just a great relationship and um yeah Ray Carroll would, um, yeah, he would look after us <laughs> pretty well. He was a coach of the cricket and the and the football team when I was when I was there. So, um, yeah, I was uh, I was lucky enough to be captain as well when I was in year twelve. And um, yeah, I know you would always just go up there at recess time, and he would just I don't know just give you like twenty bucks just cause, or <laughs> he'd be like, oh, "Come on, let's go down the street and get a milkshake." And you're just like, "All right," so you just jump in the car with him, and he was just absolute maniac driver um, <laughs> so like me and um michael talia um like nick marrick who, who um 
who we were really close with, um, yeah, we'll just like jump in the car and go see Ray and rock up late to class. And they're like, where have you been? And you're like, oh, I was, I was seeing Mr. Carroll. And they're like, okay, it's fine. <laughs> like, it's all good. So <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we had, we had some like, yeah, funny, funny memories with, um, with school and yeah, the board, the boarders would have had an awesome time. Like it would have been so much fun to, um, to do that. I know all of them are like still really close. A lot of them end up moving to Melbourne. So you see, see them a lot, but, um, yeah, it, it was a, it was awesome school and yeah, I was pretty happy that you know, I, there's probably, there's lots of, lots of schools that were probably closer for me to come, mm. come in like Essendon or, um, come into the city and, um, go to one of like the APS schools. But yeah, I know for some reason I went out to Assumption yeah, and well, do you, kept do you ever, going. Do you ever ask why the folks sent you there? Uh, I've no idea. There was, there was a school that was pretty close called Aiken College in, um, it's pretty much in Greenvale. So just down the road from, from Craigburn and my sister was going to go there and then, I don't know. I don't know how we end up at Assumption, but yeah, it was like it was it was about an hour on the bus every single day. Yeah, it's a long trip for yeah. Craigie Man. Yeah, and then we, we so we were the Greenvale and Craigie Man bus, and even that was an extra fifteen minutes for for um, those guys. So we had the the Talia boys, so Daniel and and Michael were on that, and then um, yeah, some of my closest friends were on that bus. So it was, it was entertaining, but I'm like, it was such a long trip Looking back. Yeah, yeah, like it was it was such a weird like. Um, uh, no choice, I guess, for for us to go to Assumption, but but you don't know anything yeah. different. I, that's what I found when you when you're just used to it, and yeah. then when you start to go, when you get older, you go, "Fuck, I would yeah, not why? do that now." Yeah, but yeah. it's just the way it was. Yeah, even growing up, like we played basketball, um, so rep basketball on a Friday night, myself and my two sisters, and sometimes we would have games nine forty in Kilsyth or mm. something like that, or nine forty nine forty in Dandenong, and I'm just like on a Friday night, and I'm just like. There is no way if I ever have kids. There is no <laughs> way they are playing basketball. Nine forty on a Friday. You night. say that now, but I tell you what, you're, you're like, like, you know what, I'm driving. <laughs> yeah, like my parents never let me play cricket because they said, "No, nah, it's it's your whole Saturday gone. You can't play any like." I know you start at eight o'clock or whatever. All day you got to sit there watching cricket, but they let us play Friday night basketball at. Like we would travel all over the all over the state playing basketball. And I've had this chat with a lot of even yeah. like parents now. Like I got a um, there's a couple of people that we know, family friends, and yeah, they're late. Yeah. They're late, and not really only late. that, they then play basketball on the yeah. Saturday. Some mm -hmm. of them, which is in the morning, so they might get home at midnight and they're up at seven thirty playing another game. Yeah, yeah. Um, like we we thought it was funny because it was always like just say mum would take one sister, dad would take another sister, and then I would go off with someone else yeah. like so it was always it was always like pretty fun and when you're like a teenager like it was pretty cool like going playing basketball on a friday night and travel go to maccas on the way home or something <laughs> yeah, like yeah, it was pretty cool open, but yeah yeah i just yeah it was it's yeah i guess it's kind of all what you just really knew but it was so like i just couldn't couldn't believe it, it was so much trouble did you um before i'm gonna come back to basketball did you what sports did you play so you obviously footy basketball didn't play much cricket no I was shocking cricket shocking cricket so I'm, okay i'm known as a one sport wonder at the club <laughs> i can only play one sport really <laughs> yeah and luckily luckily i found it um, <laughs> so no good at basketball i was okay you have to be all right if you're playing in, i was okay a, i was a bit oh, point guard but i never really scored i was a bit, bit more just like the just rolling around just like the distributor i would i would say yeah, point guard um and obviously pretty competitive and, and fit with, so I kind of, you kind of just made, I don't know, you kind of were okay just through that. But, um, yeah, it was only basketball and basketball and footy, never played cricket, never tried. I'm shocking at tennis. Shock. Oh, I try golf. I'm pretty, I'm not good at it. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the one sport wondering at the, that, at the club. Geez, you're, geez, you're good at it. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm Lucky I found that one. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah, cricket. I think back now is growing up. I mean, I played, I played them all, but yeah, cricket's mm. one of those ones where you, you you're dragging your oh, like, mate. Big yeah. shout out to all the folks that drive you around. Yeah. Like growing up, yeah. like you know, anyone that's driven you around in sport. Like I remember mm. driving the old man. I think we had to go down to um, Bendigo, and it was mm. like 40 degrees. It was a rep yeah. game. And it was like a trial match and it was the whole day. It was, it was 40 degrees mm. and, um, we fielded and then I was, I think we all got a bowl and I've yeah. come on and bowled like the two worst <laughs> overs. I was that nervous and get, I remember getting yeah. in the car and he's like, yeah. you know, he never really say that he's real good dad. And you're just like, geez, long drive, <laughs> long, long drive just to watch that shit. <laughs> I, I was rattled. True, mate. I was, like, yeah. I was oh. like, fine. Now looking back now, yeah. I go, geez, it's. It is really important to make that call at 14, 15, you know, yeah. picking one of the sports. Cause, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's pretty tough. Even like you think of 
we were lucky. We played Vic Metro, so we trained at Look, Princess Park or yeah. Coburg, so we were pretty pretty easy for us. But then, like you think of Vic Country, and well, Jesse Cameron was saying he yeah. had to the, some of the things they had to do. Yeah, even the boys who live like WA, like WA is huge, and like um, so Camden McIntosh, who actually travelled travelled with his, I think he lives like eighteen hour drive from Perth. Oh really? I'm like, how did you play footy? <laughs> like, yeah. did you fly? Like, did you fly down and, and play footy in Perth? And he was just, yeah, just it. It's just what it was. Like, he would have given up like whole weekends of just driving to come and play like state footy. And they wouldn't have known any footy. different. Yeah, yeah, just was what it was. That's great. So we're very lucky to be uh, living in in a city. Well, yeah. You've moved. You've moved down yeah. to the dark side. You went, yeah, Riddles Creek. You don't just, get out anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get down at Riddles Creek. Oh, my, it is. My mum and dad sold up. They're they're not no longer there. So it's uh, you can't just go down there and. Let's be yeah. honest, mate. You go down there and it's not it's not a couple of coffees. It's a thousand beers and, and got, you know, you can't get home. So you've got to really prepare for yeah, it. Yeah, you do. you got to stay there or you just got to cop a, cop a long I try drive home at night Plugger and the boys and big shout out to all the Riddle boys. But I try to get them up into town if I can get mm. them. Yeah. Um, they've all got kids and relaxed and they love uh, they love home. Now, let's go back to the topic we were talking about off air because this is a good one for everyone out there. I'd love to know their suggestions afterwards. But you're off the piss at the moment because you're back into – um, you know, heavy training loads and by, by the word piss, I mean alcohol. Um, so what is it, we're having a chat, what is it that you do on a weekend now when you've gone yeah. off season, which just involves catching up with friends, you're a social guy, having Travel. a few drinks, traveling, Travel around, yeah. all that kind of stuff. What is it now? Like, what do you, uh, like, let's discuss yeah. this because I told you, let's pause that <laughs> combo and save it here. Weekends now, I mean, you, you just don't train weekends? Uh, so we do, we train Saturday morning. Um, so we'll, we'll be at the club Which is good. Saturday morning at seven, seven o'clock, finish by nine or something like so that. So is it just- So you get your whole weekend What still. is it, like a, just a- run. Um, Just run. Yeah. Just running, no weights. Yeah. At, at the moment, it will be running pre-Christmas. Um, and then once you get after Christmas, it will be a footy session. But you still start early. Yeah. Like you, you're, you're out of the club by 10 o'clock. So you still got your whole weekend. But yeah, as we're talking about off air, you know, obviously in the off season, you enjoy yourself. You can have- a few more beers and, and probably um, head down Chapel Street a bit more than what, <laughs> what you should. But yeah, I, I was like, uh, so we're getting into a pretty heavy, heavy load, um, training load. So I'm like, oh, I'm just going to try to stay off, um, stay off the piss for a, for a few weeks until we hit, hit the Christmas. And I was just thinking, I'm like, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at, I was trying to look at events. I'm like, oh, I don't mind the basketball. I think um, there, there's a pretty good game on it. Um, Hisense or wherever they play, John Kane maybe, and I'm like, all right, maybe I'll go to that. But it's 31 degrees this weekend in Melbourne. I'm like, oh. all right, the beach. All right, I'll go to the beach. But I'm like, the beach isn't like the Gold Coast beach where you can pull up your own bit of sand and you got to be able to K between the next person. Like, you're trying to find a park for a <laughs> while. You're, you're heading down to Black Rock or Sandringham, and you probably don't even go on the water anyway. But <laughs> yeah. I'm like, all right, so we probably need a few s- suggestions of what. Yeah. What do you do on the in the weekend if you're not sitting at the pub? It's a great call. I mean, I, I, my, my mindset <laughs> shifts. I'm thinking, where am I going? <laughs> I've been trying to find something. Like, there's got to be something. Can you, to, can you go to Sydney for? A, would you go, would you go to Sydney for the night? Oh, that is the perfect. Like you, you could can duck up, go to Sydney, chill out. Oh, the same thing though. You probably yeah, go, oh, yeah, wouldn't mind going to, yeah. you know, you get the ho- Revisis or something, <laughs> a couple of quiet ones. You get a hotel at, at Coogee, Coogee and you're like, oh, geez, how do I not drink around here? <laughs> yeah. Maybe you got to go to like, oh, I don't it's know. A, it's, a, it's actually, fun. well, I guess when you get to our age. Think you, you, missus. Yeah, yeah, we're both single. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If you got a missus, mate, you're probably you're doing some, you know, couple of yeah. things. I don't flea market know, maybe on Camp Campbell yeah. singing. You might need market. to get into the, you might need to go home and start you know learning some of these recipes from, the, <laughs> from Mum and Chanel. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It was um, I'm running out of ideas. I'm actually sitting here thinking like, what can you do? I mean, because you don't. I'd say go exercise. You don't need it because you do it all yeah. week. This is your rest period. NBA is a big one during the Arvo. Like yeah. I'd love that, but you know, a couple of same gamers. Just watch that. That'll run out after four p.m. Yeah, you probably lose his first league as well. Just but thinking no. about it, I was just thinking like, how lucky are AFL boys off season aligns? Like the way yeah. the off season aligns, it's perfect. Like <laughs> with you the NFL, NFL <laughs> NBA kicks off. Yeah, um, racing the, season, ra- spring carnival, and the spring. So yeah. I mean, Mel- Melbourne's been a bit delayed, but as we film this today, yeah. it's a cracker outside. I think we get thirty tomorrow. It's, you know, it's building 
Yeah, yeah. It imagine is. being like, imagine it was middle of winter and you had three months off. Yeah, You'd be burning. <laughs> you just have, oh, you, at least yeah, you can get Europe. to Europe. That's the only, that's the disadvantage about playing playing footy is that you miss the, the summer Europe. Yeah. Like you can't go away in the middle of June. Mm. So, um, yeah, but it, it, we are, well, I don't know. I think I'd rather go watch NFL and I, I wasn't able to go this year and I feel like everyone in our f- NFL fantasy, our, our aces, Aces team. I feel like every single one of them, besides us two, went to America. I know. I'm going in. I'm going in, Jan, and I'm going to let you all know. I'm going to go. I think we're going to a Raiders game in Vegas. Yeah, it'll be unbelievable. That. I think they're. I think it's Chiefs as well. I think oh, it's really? Chiefs. I think yeah. it is. Yeah, it's pretty much a nightclub apparently, the Vegas um, stadium. But um, yeah, well, we, let's. Yeah. We should tee up something next year, next off season. I want to do a big trip where we do a big NFL tour. Yeah. I just and college as well. I, oh, <laughs> I, I, we talk about it a lot here on Os American yeah. Aces. I think some people get a bit like, hey, go back to the footy chat. Like, no, no, we love the NFL, all right? So, yeah. But it's just the best, man. Yeah, it is. Uh, Tommy, big Tommy Lynch, he went over to to America and he went to LSU. Um, so college, I've been trying to get into college, but yeah, the the um, I guess like the community spirit and stuff is unbelievable. But he was at the LSU Ole Miss game, so biggest rivalry there, and they rushed the field. And he he's not really into NFL or anything, but he's FaceTiming me. Over in America. On the field. On the field. Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> I was just like, there's no way I'm answering that. I was watching the game here like Sunday morning at nine o'clock or something. <laughs> and I'm like, you are kidding me. I'm like, he doesn't even watch it. And he's rushed the field and, and he's he's got a couple of photos just standing in the end zone just oh. on LSU's ground. I'm just like, oh, this is just unfair. <laughs> they just do it so differently. And I, I my, my, um, we just had a chat with Maisie and Job last week about AFL players rocking like casual kit to games. I'm a massive believer in it. I just think, I I know it's a team game, but so is NFL. So is, you know, basketball is a little bit more individualized, but it's still a team game. I just think if we want to make this game bigger and better, we need to shine the spotlight on a few things. Now, it doesn't mean that everyone has to wear casual, but imagine like, you know, you boys decking out and you, I mean, you don't have to, you could wear casual, but- I just think uh, I'd love to see a little bit more American kind of vibe. Yeah. I reckon it's changing a fair bit that kind of like what players wear to games. I remember my first couple of years, it was slacks, like suit shoes, tucked in with a belt polo Yeah, for every game. And then we at Richmond, um, it was different. So Richmond's just like your tracky shorts, tracky pants or whatever. And, and yeah, like you can wear runners and that. Like your training top or something and runners. So I feel like there's a bit of a shift in like, comfort there being able to like wear what you want but i don't know i kind of see like these players like i think Devontae smith's a pretty good example Job said he that. absolutely ro- like his suits are probably worth like fifty thousand dollars and i'm like well if we did that if we were casual i'd probably just wear me no know, but that's the thing because I, mean, I, I think from a brand point of view right brands would would give you stuff to where you'd return yeah. it or you could keep it depending on the relationship. Yeah. And you'd build, not only would you build relationships with more brands, you have cool photos, memories. Yeah. And all these brands and fashion brands and businesses, they get like, yeah, well, they get a bit more yeah. exposure and it becomes a bit more, yeah. I don't know, everyone's just jumping back in. Yeah. I, I don't know. They did something with that AFLX, didn't they? Yeah, didn't they, AFLX didn't they do is that? great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, and it was, um, you know, like, even if it's once a year, like they're doing, uh, there's yeah. a question coming, right? What do you think of the mag- magic round? I'll yeah. talk to you in a second about that. But that's a perfect round. Yeah. To just, oh, yeah, it would be. Just yeah. put everyone in casual <laughs> clock. Like wear your best kit. <laughs> like wear your best kit. Yeah. Magic Jeez. round. No club attire. Like, and then there's an award. Best yeah. dressed. Fans <laughs> vote. Like fans <laughs> vote. Like, I mean, you're, you're literally walking in and you're taking it off. You look at LeBron, like he does a presser, or all yeah. the boys, and they're just- you know, they're not in the Lakers kit. They're just casual. I yeah. just think it looks elite. I would probably have to be, I don't know if you've seen that video of Ryan Fitzpatrick when he steals. Yeah, he's here with the, yeah, the chest there. Sean Jackson's. Yeah, uh, man, that's huge with chains. chains. <laughs> or Kirk Cousins when he got, he's got all the chains on <laughs> recently. Yeah. Um, that'd probably be me. I'm a bit off. I'm a bit old now. Turn 30. But that's the thing. It's just funny. Like, yeah. even if you just rocked one of the young people. Yeah, he's a bit of personality. I think, I think it's, it's definitely a shift. Like, I feel like the fans and, like the footy community want to see a bit more like personality. Yeah. So instead of doing interviews and just saying the cliches and things, I think fans are a bit open to like oh, who, like who is Dan Presti or who is, you know, Jezza Cameron. Like we want to see who he is. And I think that's the good thing about Instagram is that you can connect with like your favorite player or mm. you can see what, 
like your players doing in the off season or what he does off field and stuff. I think, I think people are coming a bit more open to yeah. to players just not being robots, really. Yeah, um, well, that and we know that the robot doesn't come from like you know it's it's not that you're trying to be a robot. You mm. you, you naturally get pulled back in the line if yeah. you say something because of the sponsors and all the people that are involved in the yeah. in the clubs. But now they're starting to go, well, we want more content. We want more you yeah. know, organic, real you. And it's good. Yeah. That's why this is great. Like we, the amount of messages, and I, I can't thank everyone that writes in enough, but the amount of messages we get about our guests because mm. most of them are high profile and, and they go, oh, I didn't know he was like that. Yeah. Like, geez, yeah, he's a cool. ripper. I'd love to have a beer with him. Like, that's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. And I steal it from Jakey, our great mate from the Unlaced podcast. His whole thing is um, humanizing the athlete and it's a great yeah. call. It still sticks with me because it's so mm. true. You, you're on TV, you, you know, a lot of people look up to you, but they don't know you. Yeah. And then once they do, that's what I love about these potties is you can kind of understand where they grow up. What do they do when they were growing up? Like, you know, how yeah. many people in their family? What what are the what are their interests? What are they not interested in? Yeah. yeah and all of a sudden awesome. they just go, Oh, yeah, right. Now when I go watch the footy, I'm I'm cheering even louder. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know what he's like and yeah, his stories. I, I listened to one with Aaron Rodgers back to NFL and I know my my kind of like view, view of him was just like he's so arrogant. Mm. You know, like he he pots his receivers for dropping balls and says like, Oh, we just need to play players that wanna wanna win and stuff. I'm just like, Oh, it's a bit odd. But then I listened to a podcast of him with um Joe Rogan. And oh, that um, was great. They didn't it? even talk about NFL. Nah. Like at all. I was just like, this is just like so different. He he copped a lot for his um vaccine status. Political and stuff, views and all that yeah, stuff. All that. But I'm just like, he like sat down and explained. I'm just like, this is He's, he's obviously one of the, like, the greatest quarterbacks of all time and he's 39 or something. So he's kind of like at that stage where he, he can kind of say what he wants and, yeah, and he's, stuff. But he's done it. I'm just like, it's so true. Like everything that he was, he was saying about, or like kind of like your view of him. And then he explained like his situation. You're like, oh, gives context Jesus. to everything. Yeah. 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 So it was, um, yeah. And he's, he, yeah. The things that like he was saying in, in that podcast, pretty I obviously liked it because of NFL and stuff, but I'm just like changed yeah, your view just, a bit, yeah, 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 changed it completely. I think it's what what people are kind of craving. They want to they want to see what everyone everyone's like. Like mm. they know what they can do on a footy field, but like, oh, what, what's he like as as a person? Yeah, people what's always ask, what's Dusty like and stuff. I'm like, he's just like me and you. Like he's he's as normal as as me and you. Like. But people just like want to know like everything about yeah. everyone. So the thing with yeah. Dusty is he's so exclusive, you yeah. know. Yeah, he and, is. and and he's probably from the. I mean, he's probably real quiet, and that's just the way he is. Um, but that makes people want more, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. It's like they're even more keen. Like, oh, you, what, I want to know more, you know. Yeah, yeah it is. Oh, uh, ha- how's he going? Is he ready to? Is he back at training and all that uh, firing? Yep. Yeah, so, um, well. We're, we're not back training yet as, as of oh, yet, so the, but um, oh, well, when this the podcast young boys, will be out, but yeah, 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 we'll be back. So yeah, he's, um, he's good. So yeah, he, um, he was able to get away, um, back to New Zealand and, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I know I kind of look at, we got Taranto and Hopper coming in, but I feel like we got a new, new Dustin coming in as well. Like he was obviously interrupted last year and didn't have a, have a great run and stuff, but after just having like a no surgery preseason and not injured during the preseason makes such a big difference for your year and just setting up. So he was able to come, come in and do some special things, even at training. And, um, yeah, oh, oh, he might not ever get back to what he, what he was, but like it's almost impossible. an 80, an 80 percent dusty of that is still unbelievable. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how we, how we're using this year. Having, having do you have um, any idea how you're going to use all your weapons? Uh, if I was coach, clearly he's going to play tough, yeah. deep forward and, and then go on in the midfield and just run a muck for five and then go back forward. But yeah. I'm not the coach. Oh, uh, well, like having having um, yeah, Taranto and Hopper come through. I'd probably rather, oh, not rather him. Obviously, I'll come in the midfield with me. But I think our forward is just such a such a weapon. Oh, he's so dangerous. And especially especially having Lynch, um, Jack, Rewalt, and Dusty. Dusty probably takes the best defender. You know what I mean? And then it's like, well, who are you going to play on Lynchy? Like you need a tall on Lynchy. So I kind of like look at when we play Brisbane um, and like a, a Starkovich, is that his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The back pocket. Yeah. He he has to play on Dusty instead of playing on Shea Bolton uh, up forward. You know what, what I mean? You got Shea as well. You got Shea so, there as well. So yeah. it's things like that. So I'm like, uh, that's why I feel like it's pretty, it's pretty hard to tag, I feel like, in the midfield these days. Cause you, you probably need more ball winners. It's pretty hard to have a have a tagger in there. So I feel like Dusty up forward 
Like he either takes a, a tall defender away from Lynchy or a small away from Shea Bolton. And then Shea Bolton can play midfield. And then mm. we've got, um, yeah, Tim and uh, Jacob coming in as well. So it's just like we have so many, so many like options. Wep- weapon. <laughs> like, yeah, we've got some, we've got some really good players now. And Danny Rioli's spending himself at half back. You know, he, um, was pretty stiff to not be all, all uh, it wasn't all showing now. Nah. So he, he was pretty stiff there. And, you know, Dylan Grimes still playing some great footy. Um, we got some guys like Noel Bolter and Josh Gibkiss who was slowly starting to cement their spot in the, in the team and, and um, get their careers up and going. So, um, yeah, we're it's pretty exciting at the moment. So. Oh, mate, you've done well. You've It is. It is. What's it like? What's it like going from the Suns? That are now they're going they're going well now. I think the Suns like they're they're on track. But back then, like they weren't. And you clearly would have been in that like all of you. You all would have been going. I'm loyal, but I also want to go back and play yeah. at home. What was it like to go Suns? <clears throat> very limited crowd, not a footy town. Um, getting there, uh, but then come back to Melbourne, yeah. play at the Tigers, mm. and go to a club that was struggling for years, but then, it, you know, yeah, all clicked. you blokes have rocked and you yeah. clicked and now it's like the biggest powerhouse of all time. And you're <laughs> kind of in that mode again now. You've had a bit yeah. of a, not a bit of a lull, but like everyone yeah. thought, oh, they're going to have to rebuild. No, no, no. You've just done it so quickly. You've got all these <laughs> yeah. weapons in there. You're back to that sweet spot again. Like yeah. how, it must be the, you must be so grateful for your, oh, your, yeah. your Absolutely, yeah. Marty Pass just getting the work for you. <laughs> yeah, he did. I remember um, just touching on Marty. He had um, Brian Lake as a, as a client. And Brian moved from Doggies to Hawthorne and he won three or four, yeah, Norm I think. Smith. And he was Norm Smith. And I remember Marty saying, he's like, mate, you like, you can do that. Like there's every chance of having him. I'm like, oh, that's not going to happen. If I play in a final series or a prelim, I'll be, I'll be happy. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, that, that was, um, that was <laughs> pretty good decision call. by Marty. <laughs> like, yeah, it's pretty tough. But, um, yeah, on the Gold Coast, when I first, first went there, I always thought that we would win, win a flag. Like, our team was unbelievable. If you go, oh yeah, back, you go back to the, yeah, no, it's, it, yeah. you lost the, all of them. Yeah, the team, like if name some players, so people remind them. Uh, well, like through the spine, it was probably Dixon, Charlie Dixon, Lynch, Harley Benell, who was probably Flying. the best nineteen-year-old I've ever seen. Forty and three. Yeah, when he was 20, mm. 20 years old, um, and then Jay Gray Mira, who was just so unlucky with his knee injuries when he went there, but he was. Well, he was pretty close to Harley as that young player. Dave Swallow, who's won a couple of BNFs, who's still there. He's probably the only one who's really stayed, him and Sam Day, I reckon. And then there was myself, Ablett, obviously, um, Stephen May. Um, who else was there? There was like Trent McKenzie, yep, like, who's still still going at Port Adelaide. Little he fish, was, Brandon Matera. Yeah, little Brandon fish. Matera. Uh, um, I'm trying to think who I had like Zach through. Smith in your prom. Yeah, he was, Zach he was Smith. Going really Even like well. Tuke Miller, he was he was there. I think in 2014, and he was like a half forward, and obviously he's become an absolute jet. Um, so it was just oh, I'm sure I'm sure there's more, but oh, I said Lynchy, but well, there's heaps. Like, there was heaps, but like you know, you even had your, your marquee players as well. Was yeah. it Car- Carmichael? Was Carmichael, it? like Michael Wishitali, he come to Gold Coast on the back of the BNF at Brisbane, and they made finals. 2009, I'm pretty sure, and he won their BNF come to Gold Coast, mm. and it was just like we had, we had, and he would have been pretty young. Jared Harbrow come as a 23 year old or 22 year old. Um, like if we, I, I truly believe when I was there that we wouldn't flag eventually, but just started losing too many. We we all got injured. I think there was one point, there was one season, and I think there was about six midfielders who had different knee injuries. That was like. Richard Talley had an ACL. I did my lateral meniscus. Jager snapped his patella tendon. Dave did his, Dave swallowed his PCL and Ablett did his medial. It wow. was all in one year. And we were just like, how does that happen? Like, I know. it was just like so unlucky. And we never really were able to like play all together in one team. I think 2015, and I would have been early, th- 13 or 14 when Gaz popped his shoulder out in round 16. I think we were like nine and five or something like that. And then the last eight games of the year, we won once without having, having Gaz there. And well, obviously he's, a, he was an absolute superstar, but like we were there, like we were probably going to play finals that year. And then we don't make finals. Guy McKenna gets 
get sacked and um, Rocket came in. So yeah, that would have been 2000, 2014 because Rocket yeah. started started in fifteen. Um, but yeah, it was always oh, my, growing up as a kid, I was a Melbourne supporter, so always at the G, like. It wasn't like a hundred thousand like Richmond get, but I'm always like, this is how AFL should be. Um, you know, like we would play on the Gold Coast, and like it was, it was okay. Like we, we were good. Bec- it was good because we were 18 years old. There was 25 of us that got moved away from home. Like we were all from interstate, and we kind of just learned to grow up together. Um, you know, I was in I was in a host family for probably about six months, and then we moved out. Um, and everyone kind of did the same. So everyone was in a house of like three or four boys within five minutes of each other. So like we had so much like fun and always, always with each other. Like we were always, there was, as I said, like 25, 18 year olds all in the one spot on the Gold Coast (laughs) and the weather's hot. Like you go to the beach and, um, yeah, like we, we had some fun, but we had no idea how to be a professional footballers yeah. really. That, that's it. That's what I feel like it came down to. Like even when I got traded at the end of 16, um, it took me a long time to like get a grasp on game plan. Um, like it was so much more advanced mm-hmm. at Richmond and obviously like um, Dim is an absolute gun, Hardwick. Um, and like it took me, it probably took me like four months to really get my head around like our game plan and like and all that. we have a structure for a like long down the line kick. And it's just like, I oh, like that was like mind blowing. And then <laughs> like, we've always had that at Richmond or like not, not really like stoppage stuff. Like stoppage stuff was always pretty similar, but it was just like every single passage of play we had like a game plan for. Yeah. Break it down. Yeah. You break it down behind, where, yeah. where Gold Coast was a bit like, all right, let's just play one-on-one here or like let's just control the ball and, and stuff like that. I think that's why, yeah, I reckon that was probably the biggest shift. Obviously, playing in front of crowds and stuff was was unbelievable. And, yeah, you kind of never really able to, like, pick up that adrenaline and feeling in anything else that you do. Um, now, we, I think my first game that against Carlton was probably 60,000 maybe. And I remember running out and I was just like, this is unbelievable. Like, 60,000 run down to the Punt Road end and the Richmond cheer squads there. And I was just like – like this is unbelievable. And then obviously, um, yeah, going on in 2017 and playing in that final series, like I don't think it will ever happen again of, of like that feeling in that prelim final, like when Kane Lambert kicks a goal in the first 10 seconds or whatever it is. Like I don't like, it was unbelievable. Like the, the, the oh, crowd, like noise. I, I somehow ended like towards the half forward flank. Um, from the first centre bounce. And I just remember like the, the actual ground was shaking. Like I swear the ground was shaking and I was just like, this is absolutely rocking. Like <laughs> it's absolutely rocking. And then it was actually a pretty good game. I think we just kicked away in the last like five, 10 minutes of that game. So it kind of like blew the margin out, but it was, it was unbelievable. And once we had the game one, um, like I remember trying to talk to someone on the other side of the centre bounce of the circle and couldn't hear, couldn't, couldn't hear. hear. Like I couldn't hear myself. Like, it was like it was literally like every single person in that stadium was screaming. Oh, um, that's that is that's footy. Yeah, it? that was good. And it like the grand final wasn't even like that. Like the grand final was a bit like more crowd, but obviously the more corporates and the uh, the neutral fan probably go. But like that prelim was just crazy. And we, obviously we played in other other prelims and stuff, but that was just like never ever happen like that at like ever again. I don't think. Oh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> What's it like winning one, man? Like, and being, you know, the coolest thing about seeing friends grow up, you know, you'd see where they've come from, you, you know, the, the, their journey, you know, all their family. And then, you know, even just going to the Suns and seeing how tough it was. And then, and then to just turn it upside down and you got everything now, you got the crowd, you, you're, you're at home, you're happy, you're winning and you win a flag. Um, yeah. Not three, but this first one, like, how yeah. do you describe it? Yeah, uh, I I've enjoyed the first one the most just because it was all new, like didn't know what to expect. Yeah, didn't know like did not know what to expect at all. Um, and it was, oh yeah, because it, it was at the G. That was it was a kind of like better event than I feel than it was up at the Gabba. Um, and it was a really good game. Like we were underdogs. Um, Adelaide were unbelievable that year in 2017. Like they were easily the best team. Um. All year. So it was kind of like that part of it where we weren't expected to win. We weren't even expected to make finals that year. I think that made it so much better. Um, 
and then kind of like we're able to enjoy like the last like five or 10 minutes. Um, don't really remember much of like after it, like walking around the ground and stuff. I feel like you kind of just wanted to get it done with and then just go right, like go into the rooms with everyone and like sing the song. Um, so I don't really remember much of that, but then we were able to go back out on the ground and kind of like sing the song and just like kind of take it in. Um, and then it probably, it probably, it didn't really hit you until you stopped drinking and partying really. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. like we had, we had like family day on the Sunday. Um, I, mean, I think on that night of, we went to crown and we just had to get like chaperone through. Cause it was just like so many crowds people. everywhere. Like going like down the elevator, it was just like chockers. Like it was just like, I'm um, like, you kind of just like didn't know what to expect. And obviously Swan street was like an absolute, mayhem <laughs> like people were just like climbing on cars and, all like dusty cuts and yeah, all, like dusty all, the, cuts. all the barbers and that yeah. were just open Walk, for business walking into bottles and just taking slabs and <laughs> it was like they had to close it off and um yeah i think it was it was yeah it didn't really sink in until probably a bit like maybe like a week later when we kind of like could actually just sit down and just like enjoy it um yeah and then yeah it's pretty it's pretty funny like I always kind of thought like, what would you feel like after it? Like, would you have like the same motivation? But it was so good that you just want to win another one so bad. Like I, you probably like, because you got a taste of it, you're like, I want another one. Yeah. Like it's straight away. You just, cause like it kind of happens. You go on your trip and then a month later, you're like, all right, like, let's go again. Like, let's. When does it, when does it like, sit, like when do you sit down and actually go, wow. Like you, Mm. As you said, you, you drink and you party and you have your Mad Monday, probably a couple of weeks because you've won. Yeah. But then when you go and like, because it makes so, like, it makes so many people so happy. Yeah. Uh, even watching, you know, even just seeing friends win now, yeah. you know, it almost brings a tear to your eye because you just know how hard it is and yeah. you just see how hard they've worked. Some of them 10, 12 years. Yeah. But then you see all the family and you see how hard it is for the, like, we're just talking about parents yeah. driving you, but fucking, you know, wherever yeah. it is, Danny Nong on a Friday for basketball, yeah. you know, all these people that, mm get to celebrate it with you when does that sink in you reckon yeah it's probably it's probably not until you actually like go and like sit down with mum and da- mum and dad so we oh it would have been a bit later on probably like november we took the cup home and like had the medal and stuff obviously and it was probably like then when you kind of sit back and just like how weird like we have the premiership cup <laughs> yeah. like sitting on our dining table and like had like obviously like friends and cousins and stuff like come over but it was just like like the premiership cup, like the actual premiership cup is just like sitting at our table in Craigieburn. It's like, so good. It's just I remember crazy. like carrying it in, like, cause we're on the main road in Craigieburn. I'm like, <laughs> like, like, like literally like covered it up. So like, <laughs> don't get bloody mugged or something down Craigieburn Road. But, Imagine losing the cup. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's probably like, it's probably like having those moments when you can actually like sit down with the people who helped you along the way and you can be like, oh, I won. Or like watching the replay. I remember like there's really good vision of, um, the last quarter, they shoot, they sh- um, show Punt Road Oval because all the Richmond fans are there who like couldn't get tickets, and it's just like so, like it's so good to watch. And I think that's actually one of my favorite things. Like when I'm sitting, I uh, walk down Swan Street in Richmond, and um, especially in that 2000 like 18 year after we after we won it, people were just saying like, "Thank you so much for that." It was one of the best days of my life, and that. And that's probably like the things that you don't really realize as you as you're playing that like people were waiting for so long for like that. Well, we didn't win one since like 1980 or something. And people were just like, I've never seen a premiership before or mm. um, like last time I was 10 years old and I didn't really like, I've been waiting for this and you made us so happy and all this stuff. And that's probably the things that you enjoy the most. Like people who don't know, like strangers are just like, you change your know, life. Yeah, yeah. You made them so happy. And um, yeah, we had a pretty unbelievable run there for, four years especially from 17 to to the end of 20 and yeah 20 was obviously a a tough year for everyone in melbourne but um yeah i guess having that little bit of little bit of joy what to to see us be successful it was um yeah it it is something that you kind of take for granted when you when you just i know on the daily grind going in and and training you kind of like you can make so many people people happy as i'm sure like a lot of other clubs will um, when they when they get their chance to. Nah, well said, mate. Well said. You've hit the uh, nail on the head there. It makes so many people happy and 
yeah, to, to win as many as you have, it's yeah, you know, it's it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, you're probably gonna win a couple more. That's what, <laughs> I mean, what if you win two more? I mean, yeah. fuck I, was reading, I was reading something the other day. I think it was on SEN about the comparison with me and Tim Taranto, and both going to extension uh, extension clubs or expansion clubs, sorry, and they um, moved at 24. And it was like played similar games. All our like stats were similar. I'm just like, oh, I hope he has the same yeah. same. I got. A, I reckon I got a three or four more years left in me. <laughs> yeah. And if we can go again and, and win another one, but yeah, I, when even when I went to Richmond, I always I always thought they would have success. Maybe, obviously not three and playing four prelims, but um, like the, the team was so good. Like we had Alex Rance, who was probably 27 or 26 when I got there in 17. Um, Jack Rewalt was 27, I think. Koch was 26. Dusty was 25. Myself, um, like, Caddy come over. He was 24. Um, Toby Nane Curvis would have been 22 or 23. Like, we got him in the trade. Big pick up um, that as well. Yeah. So, like, I feel like I always thought that we would have success at Richmond. Like, they, they, were, they played a lot of final series, just could never really get over, like, that first – first final or, or anything like that. And I feel like they had a, had a pretty like down year. And I just thought like, look at their team. Like they've got so many superstars still on that, on that team. So it's kind of how we were able to narrow it down to, to them. And, um, yeah, at, at the time I, I was like, Oh, I'm not moving for success because you never know what's going to happen. But, um, I always believed that Richmond would, would have success. And, um, yeah. I was right. <laughs> you were. You were. You've right. done well. Yeah. You need to be a player manager. <laughs> Just back to that. When you were getting poached by Richmond, what other clubs tried to pick you up? Were there, were there, uh, were there heaps? And did yeah, you, there actually wasn't did, that many. Oh, yeah, really? There wasn't that many. Yeah. Was so Richmond I was, just the best offer? Uh, uh, it was a good offer. It was yeah. a good offer. <laughs> um, no, we, well, we kind of narrowed it down. So I wanted I wanted to go to like a club that played at the G. So that, that was like a Carlton, Essendon, Melbourne, I, I was keen on, but they, I think they just picked up Petraka and Oliver in the draft before. So they, they were like, we don't, and uh, Viney as well, he was there a couple of years before. So they're like, we don't need midfielders. So that kind of ruled them out. Never spoke to Carlton. Essendon, I don't think they had any like draft picks that year. And then it kind of came down to Hawthorne and, and Richmond. So I met Hawthorne. Um, when Clarko was there and they were in a bit of like a, a odd phase. So Mitchell and um, Geordie Lewis, I reckon had, would still there. I reckon that would like, just like kind of on the back end of it. Well, I think Mitchell might've got, gets to West coast very soon. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they might've both been there, but there was like, they kind of like going out. And then Tom Mitchell was going to Hawthorne. Jager was out of contract as well. And he was going to Hawthorne and I was just like, and they came off the back of a, unbelievable period where they won four and I was just like, Oh, don't know. Like I like great club. Like Clarko was unbelievable to, to talk to and sit down with and, um, and just kind of like, I don't know, just get to know him really. And, um, and then I met Richmond. I went over to Dimmer's house and, um, it was just me and my manager and the, the list manager at the time and, and Brendan Gale. And it was just like a casual conversation. Like we didn't really talk much footy, um, until we kind of presented, pretty similar to, to what I saw with the other two boys. And um, yeah, it was just like, well, I feel like that Richmond has a chance for success. So yeah, it, it kind of like really, it really like played itself out it, mm. itself. I didn't really have to make too many hard choices and, and stuff like that. So um, yeah, it was, yeah, it's done uh, it was well. good. Done and, well. <laughs> yeah. And, and I know Richmond, Richmond missed out on a few. I know they went, they were trying to get like danger. Um, I think there was a couple of others that they, they tried and they missed. And um, yeah, so had a five year deal on the table and I was like, well, I'm coming home, like back to Melbourne, always wanted to and got five years. So yeah, let's, let's do it. And Where do I sign? Yeah. <laughs> and then it took them bloody two weeks to trade me in the dra- in the trade period. We were talking about, <laughs> talking to Timmy about it and all the boys like, yeah. I think Tom Mitchell and even Jager, like they went down to the last couple of minutes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's scary times for players. Yeah. For some reason, uh, as an outsider, I just go, it's going to get done, fellas, you know? Yeah. But when yeah. you're in the, yeah, I well, guess. I think I, I told, I told Richmond, I told the club, because I, I did my, I had a knee surgery at like round 15 or something. So I was able to get it done before the season. And I told Richmond, I told Gold Coast before the season even finished. And then 
took him two weeks to get to get me done. I thought I was going to get the first second yeah. of the trade period, nah. but sitting at home in Craigieburn just <laughs> flicking on the news, <laughs> flicking the radio. I'm like, are they going to get it done or what? <laughs> oh, Man, and that's what you're texting your manager like, yeah. hey, mate, relax, we've got it covered, but it's sorted. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. Well, yeah, you've kind of touched on it all, mate, and um, it's yeah, it's exciting. I mean, as a as a footy fan, it's it's getting oh, it's, the AFL is getting so even. You know, we yeah. we talk about NFL because we love it. At any time, any game, anyone can beat anyone. Yeah. And the AFL is literally becoming that. It's so good. You're yeah. seeing, you know, the bottom teams really push up and it's never been so even through, yeah. especially through that like mm. three to 16, you know, like it's yeah. very close. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I but, think Geelong were obviously the standout this year. I think they were so good all year, but I feel like the top 13 changed every single week. Like mm. it was always always like flipping and the, I don't reckon there's been a time where so many teams could make the finals by that last couple of rounds mm. where they, they could, they still had a chance. It was like the top 10 or something till like the last round could still make it. So, um, which makes it yeah, like a final yeah, late in the year. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it, I think it's, it's a lot better than come. I remember like early, early in my career, it was always like the top, you knew who the top three, four teams were every single year. Hawthorne, Geelong, Sydney. Yeah. Yeah, every <laughs> single year you knew, you knew. So, um, yeah, no, I think, it, I think it's in a, in a really good spot right now. So yeah. Yeah. Nah, and the magic, right. magic round will be good. I think. That's um, a question that someone, yeah. I'm going to get the questions up here actually while you're talking, but what are your thoughts on the magic round, mate? Uh, yeah, I think it's a great idea. I think it's, I think it's awesome. So, um, I know the NRL did their, did their one up in Brisbane, but, um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's a, it's a pretty cool, cool thing to do. I think Adelaide will be absolutely pumping that weekend with all the games on. So it'll be interesting to see how they kind of, they kind of put the games up. I think there'll be a few Thursday and Friday, but so, as a, as a fan, I think like, oh, just mate. go like my, my family's talking about just driving over and staying for the weekend. Like, well, why wouldn't you? So, I mean, the tourism, it's going to go off, yeah. you know, like, there'll be, oh, you know, what round is it? Do we know what five, round, round, round five? five. Yeah. When's Anzac? Around six. Yeah, I think so. So I think it's April 13, maybe, around that time. It's, that's great. It's yeah. early in the season. Yeah, you want some good weather. Sun. Right there. Yeah, yeah, you don't want the winter. Yeah, but I, I think I think it's a it's an awesome idea. And like Adelaide Oval is unbelievable to play footy at. Always said that. Adelaide Oval, the deck and the surround, it's yeah. cracker. Yeah, and like they've been able to do it before. I think as a player, like I think we'll fly in and fly out kind of set up. You reckon? So we, I feel like the, as a player, you'll probably miss out. But as a fan, like- just, I, I would, I reckon it's such a good Depends idea. If you play, you might do the, uh, you know, the Wednesday yeah. night game or something, yeah, and then well, you can I hang think, out. I think Anzac Days, I'm pretty sure it's the next round, so we will play Monday night. So we might even get like a Sunday, Sunday game or something in Adelaide because of the, the week after. But um, it's a fixture out. Do you know who you're playing? No, nah, not yet, no, nah, not yet. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm all for it. I reckon it's a. It's great. Do you have any ideas like the magic round, like my idea of casual clothes, um, whether it's one week a year or every week? Do you have anything that you would flag? You know, when the AFL Players Association comes over and they <laughs> go, sure boys, do. what do you want? Obviously, everyone's <laughs> like, we want more money, right? But is yeah. there any ideas that you think that you could, you know, maybe implement while you're playing? Or you'd love the AFL to to trial because they've done a few. You've yeah. done the AFL X. They've done all these little, you know, little things that they never failed. They just mm. trialed and there wasn't really yeah. much, you know, appetite for it. Is there anything that you would like to introduce? Um, I think I think well, it's more probably around the rules. I feel like I I would cut the time timing down. So in the hub in in the twenty twenty season. Um, I think that was 17 minute quarters or 15 in time on, 17 in time on, but now they're 20 in time on. So like, I feel that to get the best players playing every week, cut the quarters down and like you'll pull up fresh. Like I didn't, I didn't play a lot cause I was injured in that hub year, but we'll play, we we're able to play after four days. Like we'll have four day breaks, five day breaks and everyone was playing still. Cause like, just because you miss out on 25 minutes of game time, like it makes such a difference. Yeah, yeah. And I look at like soccer, like soccer play 90 minutes. Basketball, they play 40, but they play every second day. But they would do, they play 40 minutes of game time. Like NFL is like well, a long time. Times. <laughs> yeah, 60, like 60 minutes of actual like gameplay, but they're not really out there for that long. No, they might be out there for 30 minutes. We're like, we play like the keys who don't rotate. They'll play 120 20. minutes. Mm-hmm. Like and rotate once a game. So I'll, I'll play devil's advocate. I think 
I think um, the shorter the game, the harder it is to score though, because you're fresh. Like when we're watching the, yeah. like, and this is being a, when we're at the Giants, where we were, we were, you know, we made the granny and we yeah. got, you know, we got spanked. Next year, they cut the quarters and mm. blokes like Jesse Cameron's of the world, they were just getting that, like the defenders could keep up, yeah. but that back end of the quarters is when they could get off them and kick some yeah. goals. Yeah. So that's my only thing. But I like the idea that you're going with a little bit, but I think, What's your thoughts on reducing the game so that everyone plays each other once? Do you think that's a poor decision? Uh, I get the you TV You make less thing. money. You make less money. Do you yeah. though? Because wouldn't- I think so. But that's why- so I, would go the other way. Games I would go more games less time. I would go the other way. I would rather like- I feel AFL is professional enough that you don't need to have a preseason from November to March- like maybe okay, yeah. maybe the first first to four years, but I feel like if you've been in the system for long enough, you don't need to have a four month preseason. Like if you stay in the system for six years, you know what you got to do in the in your off season. So I'm like, I kind of I reckon that we should start earlier, so still have still have the September finish. I'm a bit of a traditionalist as well. Win yeah last weekend of September two ten granny, but I feel like I feel like. Players would be more for playing more games. Well, I am. I, I would rather play less game time and more games, and yeah, like maybe not each other twice because then it'll end up being a 30, 34 yeah, round yeah, yeah, year. Yeah. But like, it's a good discussion. Yeah, I'm thinking about I, now. I, I'm thinking maybe. Yeah, I'm definitely wrong because eighteen games would be less less money for everyone. So that kind of doesn't work. Yeah. Um, I, I know that's that's what I feel. I feel like that they, they want more more game and people at more games like. Yeah, play play us more. I'll Tell you what, like we talk about NFL again. I'm going to mention it, but Thursday night football, Monday night football, Sunday night mm. football. It's definitely a thing. Like I went and watched you play last year against Blues. I think Carlton was that a Thursday, Thursday. night yeah, and round one. Yeah, 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 and just rolled in with Camby, had a couple beers, and I'm like, this mm. is hopping, and yeah. it's Thursday, and then yeah. everyone goes to work, talks about the game, <laughs> goes <laughs> Friday. Friday night or watches it at home and yeah. whatever, and then Saturday Sunday footy. Mm. It's crazy. Yeah, I like I like in the NFL how everyone plays a prime time game. Yeah, I know the Gold Coast like you get starved Friday night games and prime time games, and you normally get the. 440 slot, but I like how NFL every team gets a prime time Thursday night or a Monday night as well. Like, I would, I'd like to see, like, I know it's a bit hard and they need to make the most out of their prime time. Well, they need to make some fixtures, money, but they don't get crowds and that. I think play more, I'm, I'll, I'll be happy to play more games. I'm, I would rather play a game of footy than have to run a 2K on Monday yeah. and <laughs> shuttles and run 12K and then go and do grappling for the next hour <laughs> after that. So, I would much rather be playing footy. So, um, it is a funny yeah. one because you do play so many scratch matches at training where you yeah. could just convert that into a game. Be a yeah. bit sloppy though, wouldn't it? Yeah, we we're we're different to a lot of teams. I, I hear teams playing practice matches in like Jan. Like we we only have maybe like one half and then maybe like a three quarter leading into our our practice game. So yeah, we don't we don't really play a lot of practice games going in. But I've, there's teams that play real early scratches against each mm. other, like two different teams organised, and I'm just like. Oh, I'm not even ready for that. Like yeah, we're, we're still getting yeah. going. So yeah. Um, yeah. And I know the other, the other hate pet hate I have, not pet hate, where is it? Just a gripe is I think the kick outs, the rule, you don't get a stat out from a kick out. <laughs> <laughs> that's my, that's my gripe in the Where's AFL? Maisie? I Maisie be it, going, yeah. Dion, get Maisie <laughs> on the phone. He's going, mate, shut up. He's averaging 25, 25 a game, but they kick 10 points a game too, but nah. If you're a fullback and they're collecting stats in any league, I'm talking from local to AFL, and they're collecting your stats and you're the fullback and the yeah. other team is smack on you, but they're kicking points. Yeah. You're probably having 30, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, and you how'd you go to that? Had yeah. 30. Had 30, yeah. From where though? <laughs> yeah. That's probably my gripe. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, oh, I, I don't really want any more rules to change. I think umpiring is, probably a, is hard mean, enough at the moment. So. It is. It is. It, well, the stand rule is no good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. So the the game can't keep adding too many rules because, mm. and again, I, I love going to the NFL, but people go, hey, I don't get it. Well, yeah. well fuck, it's pretty simple. Yeah. And, and they don't change the rules Soccer. much. Soccer. They don't think they've changed a rule ever. Exactly. Yeah. So when there's all these rule changes, man, the mark, all these, um, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. It's zones. Yeah. When players are confused out there, because your full-time job to know the rules. Yeah. You're confused. Yeah. The fuck fans are confused. Yeah. And then when everyone's confused and we're talking about, 
the umpiring versus the game and the hangers and the goals and all that. Yeah. That's yeah. when it's like, come on. Yeah. Let's strip it back. Let's keep it simple. Like any business. Yeah. You know, it gets real, even game plans. You know, when you go to a team meeting, you yeah, go, yeah. what the fuck's all this? Why can't we just worry about contested ball yeah. and making a tackle and clearances? Simple. Like, let me just get rid of all that other shit going on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, like, it, it's the unique, how good our game is because it's so unique and there's nothing like it. But, like, you don't need, like, one little thing's hap- thing happens and then it's like, oh, we've got to change this. Overreaction. We've got to do this. Like, like this. I don't really think the stand rule makes like any difference besides that one step. Like someone pretends to go a little fake and you step and he's like 50. And it's just like, oh, all, all the, the yeah. 10 meter protect, protected zone. Sometimes the player with the ball doesn't even know that the players like run past them and they pay a 50 and you're just like, mm. oh, come on. Like hasn't impacted the game. Like, I, like obviously the World Cup's on at the moment. I've been watching that. I'm like, this game is exactly the same when it started. Like- if you watch a game in the nineties, it's exactly the same as, as everything. And like, I'm not really into soccer, but I'm like, you can see why it's a world game and like why they can have a world cup. And it's so popular. Like it's just every, like you can be like, all right, here's the ball. You got to kick it through the goals. Like mm. and don't, they simple. Don't fail it. Yeah. It's simple. Like basketball is simple. Like, and I feel like they're, they haven't really changed much as well. So except for the flagrants, geez, they review yeah. them a bit. But yeah, you're <laughs> yeah, right. They're, they're a bit, yeah. No, you're yeah. right. And I get it. I get why they do things. Like it's man yeah. the mark, don't move. Therefore it opens the 45 and you can hit it. Yeah. But when players with, because players are smart. This is what it's funny. A player will go uh, like dummy. So yeah. they're allowed I to move that. off yeah. the line and then you <laughs> suck the bloke in because it's a natural reaction. Yeah. Bang 50. 50. And then you go and you're giggling. You're yeah. going, what an idiot. Yeah. I would have done the like same thing. Yeah. And then there's everyone on TV, you can, loses their yeah. mind. Yeah. Like the ones for safety, like I remember. Concussion ones are very smart. Concussion, like third man up in the ruck contest. Like I, I remember Sandy, Aaron Sandlands, he <laughs> copped it. Like because he's so big, dominant ruckman, like game plan, yep, third man up every single so and so. You understand like why they bring those rules in, the slide slide the in third rule. Third man up makes me stuff. laugh. We used Because I was a winger and yeah. we used to get like we yeah, get from spr- behind. They go, yeah. if your man goes up, you don't let him up. So, the, you know, you're like, you're fucked. You're going to yeah. stoppage and, and then all of a sudden your man slips you and then goes third up and knees you. Like, oh, I'm going to cop it in a review. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it used to happen like all the time. So like, like it, it, you understand why those rules come in, come into place. But yeah, there's other rules that you kind of like, ho- hopefully zones don't come in. I think zones will like maybe center bounce. You can kind of understand because yep. like there's f- five points in it with 20 seconds to go and you, you can't flood. Like you, you understand like those rules. But if they're like, I remember in the VFL that had, if a boundary throne was in a forward line, two of the players had to be back in the forward 50. Really? And, and you'd be watching and there'll be a throw in and, the blokes would realize who were in the forward and they would like race each other back to the 50. And you're just like, this is, this game's different to AFL. Like, so yeah, I, I don't think they have it anymore, but yeah, it's probably, it's like funny. I haven't gross. spoken to anyone on this about the umpiring and, and the, and the, uh, and the rule changes, but you wonder who makes these decisions and you wonder why like captains would be a great one from every yeah. club aren't involved in these meetings. Yeah. You know, be a player, a player's voice. Because yeah. it's all good having like an AFL players, um, del- you know, your, your delegates, yeah, delegates and all, but yeah. they're, you know, a captain would see the game, I'd imagine, better yeah. and could speak on behalf of the group. Yeah. And- Well, Dan- Danger's the president. I don't know. Like he, I feel like he- But Danger's I one of 18. Yeah. So Danger, and no disrespect to Danger, he probably does a, he does a great job, but like mm. he's one of 18. You know yeah. what I mean? Just because Danger's there, there could be 17 other clubs that agree or disagree. Yeah. It'd be great to get- more of a collective and of more of a buy-in on because if he's there and they're making these rules, are they are they even listening to him? Yeah, yeah. Well, because because we always have the PA and stuff, and they will come in and like the umpires might give us like a example of the new rule changes, but then most of the time it's kind of like you're watching, you just like like the coaches are even like, well, yeah, everyone goes, what the know, fuck? yeah, where did that come from? And you're kind of like, well, surely every other club is thinking the same thing. They so are. you're kind of like, that's yeah, what I'm saying. That, that's why you source, don't really know who, who approves it. Yeah, I'm not really sure. That's that's what I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh yeah, it's very good topic though. Yeah. Good topic. Hey, and everyone's got their own opinion. So don't be mm. getting getting up us if you disagree. <laughs> we all got our own opinion. Um now, the aces questions before we get into the big prize packs for the meatball coming on the potty. Right, oh, there's a few random ones here, so I've just got to filter <laughs> yeah, them shoot, through. Just shoot. This is funny. Cal Moore, is it true Cal you and Soldo sleep naked together after a night out? <laughs> uh, 
Nah, that's true. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you uh, live with Soldo and Camby. Big shout out to the boys. I thought that was Eminem. That's you with the blonde <laughs> hair. Let's talk yeah. about the hair. Yeah. Uh, you're going to bring it back for round one? Uh, it's faded out at the yeah, moment. Yeah, it's gone at the moment. Just just the greys at the moment. Um, I'm starting to get a couple so of greys as well. Yeah, I think when, um, when me and... Rory Atkins were on, on here. I reckon I, I, it was pretty fresh. I reckon I did it like two days before it I came on the clean. podcast. It was fresh. Like when I put the Instagram photo, yeah. I was like, that's clean. <laughs> and I was just like, because uh, I, I had blonde hair last off season and I had blonde mohawk. Um, so I was rocking that for a bit. Just, I don't know, off season. Bit of fun. It looks good. Bit bored. But um, yeah, then I then I cut that and just had the top top going for a bit. So um yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'll do it or not. Just I kind of, it out. What do you do when you're not drinking on the weekend? You go get your hair done. <laughs> hair done, yeah. Maybe. I, I kind of, I've had a few different hairstyles the last few years. So just probably like pretty basic how it is now and had the just mohawk. Then I had the blonde mohawk. Then I cut it off and we shaved head for a bit. Then I dyed it all blonde <laughs> um, just before um, wacky our, our Wacky Wednesday and when it's Draco Malfoy so it kind of gave me an excuse <laughs> to just dye it all blonde and then I don't know I, I, I wouldn't mind rocking it for the season but I reckon you should a bit nervous a bit nervous about you know start playing we'll put no a poll good. up yeah we'll maybe put a, put a poll, poll up. up and we'll get people's honest opinion and I'll post them but I think I think it generally looks good. Like, you know, when people mm. do stuff, you go, that's out there. Yeah. Which yeah. is fine. Everyone can be different. I know. But I'm, yours I'm, looks great. I know. I'm, I'm also 30 now. So I'm like, is it no, time to grow up? Is nah, it time to no, grow up? We're still young, mate. We're still young. <laughs> yeah. So oh, we're both single. If someone goes, hey, you're still single. Yeah. Girlfriend, check. He's single. <laughs> uh, there you go. So there's a um, answer to that one. Thoughts on Magic Round from William Mom? Well, we just covered that. We're very excited about it. Um, this is a good question here from Caden35 underscore. What were the things you you've done to become a better player this year? Uh, so leading into this year, um, so I did my hammy round one uh, in the last game of the year in the elimination final. Um, so it was pretty it was pretty tricky kind of time because obviously lost went into the off season did my hammy. So I'm like, well, what do I do? Do I do I kind of like do my own rehab or do I just you know? enjoy the off season and, and deal with it when I get back. So, um, well, we had, we had footy trip planned. So I think our first final was September one or September two or something like that. And we were going to Thailand October one, I reckon it was. So I'm like, oh, I got about five weeks here. And I'm like, there's still teams going. Like we were out of the finals. Let's do a rehab program for, for me, for Miami. So I'm kind of like, um, into the club, probably four times a week still me our rehab coach and our, our physio so i pretty much went through a went through a rehab program i remember grand final week was big sessions probably clocking about 12 12 to 13 k's doing that um and it was, it was pretty hard i was on my own the whole time um obviously wasn't because it, it was the off season i wasn't getting up at 7 a.m into the club so i kind of could make my own time but um yeah i kind of feel like that's going to be a bit of a point of difference going into into this year, um, you know, kind of could have just gone off and I uh, had teammates who were in Bali or teammates who were, who were overseas because um, we had a bit of a month to just kind of do it. But, um, yeah, I kind of guess sacrificed that little part of the off-season to, to get my body right. And, um, it's a big decision. Yeah. So people, and to give context to this question, you have such a long year mentally, physically, you need a break. And then you just do this really nasty hammy the last week of your season because the boys could have won yeah. or could have lost. Then everyone goes out and gets hammered um, to celebrate the year. That's the truth, Mad Monday. And and when you lose, it's only a few days. It's not like you've won a granny. Yeah. And then you all start meeting up in your clicks and go overseas. But you've gone, nah, I need to get this right for next year. I can do rehab on the road which would be average or you could do it unbelievably and that's what you yeah. did and you hung around and you've sacrificed your, your, your off season so it's just good to give people context to the the decisions and you know that fact you, you go oh but i'm gonna miss out the fomo yeah you know i'm single i want to go away you know uh, but you don't you stay and not only that everyone's having a great time on instagram social media and you've just got yeah. to put your head down and and grind and get yourself back to full yeah. strength like and that's I, what you've done yeah, yeah i was still able to kind of enjoy like the like a couple of days after it, but I think I had about four days off after the season. And then it was like, all right, let's get in. Just um, pretty much working on my strength. Like I kind of 
felt like I could have improved that last year. Um, so I even did the same. I didn't play the last couple of games in 2021. And I remember we played on the Saturday and then on the Monday I was in at the club and did like a three week strength program on my legs just to, um, yeah, really kind of just make that like a bit of like a weapon, I guess. Like, um, obviously I had a few soft tissue injuries, but I'm like, well, let's get it as strong as possible. So if something ever happens, I'm protected. Like I did my hammy in round one and I reckon if I hadn't have done that program, I would have missed eight weeks. Mm. I missed two, missed two and end up, um, having no issue at all until, until the last game of the year. So, um, yeah, it's probably something that I kind of learned and you always find new ways and, and new things that are, that are got to help. So, um, yeah, it's probably, probably that. Um, and I was able to, once I, once I hit October, I was able to have about, I think I had about six days off and then I was back, back running, but I was, it was able to just run into my program so I could, you know, Makes we, we went up to the, easier. yeah, went up to the Gold Coast, had a few weddings over the, over the break and I was able just to run up there, go to the gym there instead of having to like worry about my hamstring. And yeah, it's been, it's been a really good off season. So I'm pretty happy I got that, got that done. And then, um, yeah, I'm like, oh, I could have gone back in early with the young boys, but I'm like, nah, I've done that, done that too many times before. So I'll enjoy the rest of yeah. my last weekend. You of, did the five week stint. Yeah, exactly. So probably, probably that I feel, yeah, there's a lot of things that, um, that are helping me. So introduced like sled push and I feel like my stoppage game went to a new level um, this year and I feel like well, there's something that I've changed in that, like just having a bit more power, um, being in that like low crouch position. I feel like oh, that's something that- The human meatball I rolling around. Yeah, Just so. on that, you had it. People don't realise, you, you how many games you missed? Seven? Like when I say seven, you had uh, your interrupted set, like there was games where yeah, you so got injured. Two, two, round two and three I missed and then I got crook. I was missed one. And concussion, I missed one. But I got subbed out in three. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, so I missed seven. Brownlow, you come seventh? I seventh. Think. Did I? Yeah, you, you I top, eight, eight, eight or votes. seven. You were right, top yeah. 10. I remember messaging going, mate, you're fucking top 10. You missed seven <laughs> games pretty much. Yeah. Like of the, you can't really get votes if you miss yeah. a game and you get pulled at half time or three quarter time. Yeah, so I, was sub, I was subbed out three during the year and subbed out in the final. That's a I cracker. Four. So yeah. look out. Hey, look out. <laughs> yeah. It's a I big think year. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that's the thing. Like I was able to, because I did all the work in the preseason, like, uh, like it's a pretty important time. Like this sets up your whole preseason, which sets up your season. So I think doing that work, I was able to like, even in round one, got subbed out, missed the next two. And then I came back in round four and I, it was just like, just a, another game like I'd been playing all them. So yeah, I feel like this, this time of the year is really important to set your preseason up and then your preseason sets your like season. your season, like if you, it's so hard to come back and I've done it a few times where you try to play catch up during the season and you just, you just know, like you're not at that right. Like you're not right in your peak. There you go. Peak Anyone front. out there? I mean, we do NFL yeah. fantasy. You're doing your AFL super coach. If players aren't, <laughs> if they're not fit and available in preseason, yeah. maybe it's just tough. It is, it is tough. You yeah. are, you're playing catch up. Yeah. It's more fitness because everyone's, it's just because everyone's so fit, it's hard to then be skillful when yeah. you're playing, you know, you're fatigued a little bit. Yeah. Unless they reduce the quarters, like you yeah, said, man. then uh, awesome. you might be all right. <laughs> all right. What's your, who's your favorite player in the game? Dion Presti's favorite player. Mm. Unique question for players. They don't talk about many others. Um, I love, oh, Tuke Miller is great to watch. Yeah. Like the way he works. He's all hardworking. Um, he's a he's a perfect yeah. model for young kids, isn't he? Yeah. And I remember even like when he came in his first couple of years, like playing half forward, he was always just doing everything right. Like you could kind of tell like, yeah, like he he's gonna like have a have a like long career. Um and yeah, when it was kind of it really it was kind of like when all the other midfielders like myself and Jago um and Gaz kinda of, kinda of left that he was able to step into that midfield role and yeah, he's he's probably one of my favorites to like watch because he works so hard and he's so good and like just does everything right. Um, he, he's probably one of my favorites to watch. But um, oh, it's pretty pretty tough off the off the cusp. Um, AFL Central, big shout out. That was their question. AFL actually. Central. Um, I'm trying to think of the other teams. Like, 
I hate playing against him, but he's awesome to watch Tommy Papley, who you had on the yes. show um, the other week. <laughs> I hate playing against him because he's <laughs> he's just, I don't know, just always ends up in the right right spot at the right time. Um, well, he doesn't. We found out that he can't run out of sight, so he's always fresh. <laughs> that's what we learned. He's got an issue with his calves. I go, mate, that's the best thing ever. He goes, yeah, mate, I just, oh, he's always fresh. And bloody hell, he's dangerous and he's right. Like, yeah. Watching him now that I'm on the outside and just like I love that entertainment factor. Yeah, he is so funny. Yeah. Like when he kicks a goal, he's got the tongue out. <laughs> he's, you know, he's just yeah, a bit of personality. It's good. Um, yeah, dude, I can't really there think. You go. Of, well, uh, Trav, good. Trav Boak's pretty similar to, to yeah. a to a Tuke Miller. Someone who I kind so of you enjoy watching hard working two way mids that are real yeah, skillful with yeah. the ball. There's obviously like the exciting exciting players like oh. Eddie Betts comes comes to mind. Like he was unbelievable to watch. Like you would turn on an Adelaide or a Cohen game just to just to watch what he does because he he was so good. But I know it's kind of like those players who you just know are going to be like consistent. Um, like so everyone you go on the podcast, Jack Crisp, like Crispy is so consistent. Such an underrated player. Oh. Him and him and Braden Maynard, I reckon, are the two most underrated players in the AFL. Like they're so hard to play on. But they can kind of play any position. Like I reckon Jack, I reckon he tagged Kane Lambert a few times when we played. He was playing in the midfield and then he can go back, he can kick goals. Like I reckon he's he's such an underrated, underrated player. And um like I, I reckon that's why Collingwood were so successful as well, because they have players like that who just do their job every single week. Um yeah, so it was good. We actually spent some time with Braden Maynard up in Sydney last last New Year's, and um, yeah, it was a good good fella. So um, yeah, they give a shout out to those two. Yeah, Braden hits hard. You'd love to have him on your team. Yeah. And Crispy, we already know what he does. He's an absolute weapon. And Maisie, Maisie's my favourite. Yeah, Maisie, <laughs> the big brute. <laughs> Righto. Um, this is funny. Harrison Huntley goes, is it true that the nickname Meatball came from ordering just meatballs at Subway? <laughs> <laughs> we know. I haven't had Subway for a long time. That's funny. <laughs> we know that's not true, but that's great. Um, King of the house parties. When's the new pad ready, Dion? So obviously, <laughs> Camby's building that. Big shout out to Camden Homes, our man. Yep. But you've built, you've been building a house um, for a while now, and yeah. it's not far off. It must be exciting. Yeah. Uh, King of the house parties. Already set the start. <laughs> we had a few, we had a few good house parties at our our rental in Richmond at the moment. So um, what a spot it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I purchased the house in 2018. It was in July in Richmond. So, um, it was heritage overlay. It's a good lesson to learn and ha- learn about heritage and what you can and you can't do and time in council. So oh, that held you up. Yeah. So we, um, yeah. So put the plans through and waited about two years <laughs> for, um, for plans to, to get approved. Um, Hey, the market's been going like that though. Oh, no, Nothing wrong been, with that. Yeah. Luckily, luckily. And I was able to have like tenants and stuff in it. So I wasn't losing too much. And then um, yeah, so my housemate and, and good friend who I went to school with, Josh Josh Campbell at Camson Homes, um, doing an awesome job um, building it. So move-in time will, will be, I think, in February, so just before the season starts. Um, and yeah, I think Big Big Ivan Soldo will, will come with me and not sure not sure what Josh will do. Um, he's going to Europe and leaving us, so I don't know what he'll do. Europe so I might, summer, I might need to get a new housemate, but um, yeah, it's looking it's looking really good. And um, first time I've been been able to build um, something that I've, I've got a got a house before uh, apartment before, but um, yeah, the first time I've really kind of put me all my money and all my time and making big decisions about what to what to put in so i've learned some some um very valuable <laughs> lessons about Give what one lesson what that to do that's uh, what well, anything that you could pass on don't buy a heritage house <laughs> if you're gonna if you want to knock it over that's what i that's probably i'll never never do that again yeah. um because I, I know it'll be worth it in the end and all the time that i've waited and, and everything but um it was bloody hard like we it's so it's a red clinker brick um, so it actually used to, it actually used to sit on a race course in Richmond. So it's pretty cool. Like yeah. it's, it's good, like bit of history. Like, um, so there was a race course in like the thirties, um, in Richmond. So just near the bridge hotel, um, there's an old photo from bridge road and it's, it's huge, it's old race course. And then it got sold and then they built all these red clinker brick houses for all the war vets coming back. Yeah, right. So they're all, if you, if you look in the area, they all look exactly the same. Um, so it's a pretty cool, like little spot. And, um, yeah, so I, I, I thought it's awesome. Like there's like these real nice windows at the front and red clinker brick. And I'm like, yep, yeah, like surely council work with this. Like, um, I want to rebuild pretty much exactly the same that's there. And it took two years 
to pretty much convince them that we can like do the job and, and do it the same. So two years. Yeah. And it was just because the heritage and like, you kind of understand, like sometimes there's these new buildings that get knocked over and they just like put up something that's, that's pretty basic and, and stuff. So you kind of understand why you want to keep that that vibe and that's why I love Richmond um, like the town so much because there's so much heritage and, and um, like history and, and stuff so um, yeah my back fence is actually the old race course fence that's sick, that's and sick. It's, it'd be about two and a half metres tall and it's it's actually the old race course fence that was there in like the 1930s are you keeping it? yeah so it's still there that's yeah, mean so it's still there and um, yeah so but there yeah. you go that's a good lesson yeah so run. it's good yeah that's that's probably the biggest lesson and going into I like I've done like a couple of building courses and stuff and I knew, never really knew how many people were involved. So I kind of thought like get a builder, get an architect, engineer, and it's all over. But like I've had about 50 different people having to come on site, like do soil tests, oh, do wow. like um, a heritage architect because they need to make sure that it's still like is in, in, the, in line with all the other houses that are that are here and then like so many other subcontractors that I had no idea about wow. that just need to come onto the, to it. So yeah, I, I, there's probably something I want to get into when I finish footy and um, maybe buy like land. So I don't have to worry about <laughs> yeah, I was gonna having, say, your next house <laughs> is going to be a tree. Yeah, just, <laughs> just land. And yeah, that, that's the thing. Like it's so many lessons that, that you learn and um, like, yeah, I, like even the build, like I go over there pretty much every single day because it's around the corner from where I'm living. And I just like sit there and watch Josh, like build stuff <laughs> and, and I just like watch him I'm just like I can't believe how much goes into like just a wall like a parting wall or um, like we could be extended out the back and there's a few like um, little blinds going in and like how much little details go into every every little thing so um, yeah it's been it's been pretty cool and yeah I can just kind of go there I thought I was going to get on the tools but I haven't once <laughs> I haven't done once I didn't help out at all I've kind of cleared it at the start before we before we build and I was just like ripping out trees and filling skips up, but um, like I had, the pros do the pros. Work. Yeah, I had, I had a, I got a pair of work boots at, at home and they're still in the box. <laughs> I just go with them in my, in my in my runners and they're like, you need to stop wearing white runners to the to the um site. So I'm like, uh, but um, yeah, it's all it's all coming along. Yeah, very nicely. Should be good. That's good. Should have a good house party when yeah, we move looking in. Looking forward to that house party. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Um, what else we, I mean, we've got another person, Shannon McDonald has asked, are you going to keep the hair for next season? We just spoke about that. You, you, mate, there you go. People want it. Yeah. We'll see what the poll, we'll see what the poll Let's comes back poll with. Up. And then, um, yeah, I might go with that. Or if someone has a, has another suggestion, Here maybe this is like, you're going to have to give me some context, but Mitchie Thompson has asked lambs on commercial road or lambs on Richmond after a few waters. <laughs> oh, um, I feel Give me some context to this. this is it so it's a like kebab shop. Yeah, right. It's a kebab shop on on the way. So there's one on the corner of Swan and Church, so which, which is close to home. But I've never been in there. I've ordered on Uber Eats. I actually don't know where the commercial road one is. I don't think I know. There but you go. the the main one. So me me and Ivan love doing this on a night out. Chapelli's <laughs> on Chapel Street. It's open 24 hours. They don't close ever. Oh, wow. So, so you get there, restaurant, restaurant food, like it's it's bloody good. Yeah. So maybe maybe Chipelli's. There you go. That's <laughs> great. What else we got here? I think that's pretty much it. We've got a few other questions, but they're all about the meatball. Uh, and we've asked um, <laughs> we've asked all of them, does he follow the Greyhound Prestia that's racing at the moment? <laughs> there you go. One from uh, Michael Ryan. That's a good question because I had no idea there's a doggy out there called Prestia. Uh, Have you seen it run? I've, I reckon someone sent me the like the results on like a, one of the betting sky betting racing or something. Yeah, they they just sent me the the result. It had Prestia and it won, and I was just like, would have been all right to know before yeah. before it run, but no, nah, I, I don't know if it's um. Don't know. It might be. There's a few meatball horses getting around and so things funny. like that. I don't know if they're after me, but um, yeah. That's great. Now, mate, I, you don't come on here empty-handed. We've got the brand new Rixies here. Rix Eyewear, huge shout out. Uh, obviously, we've got our Christmas, I mean, Boxing Day sale will be happening, but um, not much stock at the moment because of our Black Friday. So we've got the Soho Crystals here. I know you love your orbits. I thought I'd mix them up. They're yep. for you, mate. Brand new Rick's Eye. And everyone out there, remember, we've got the discount code ACES so that you get a juicy offer at checkout. Um, got a fair few pair of these. Yeah, you do. You're, you've you've you looked after me, have you? No, mate, you've looked after <laughs> me. It's a, we all look after one another. Um, this segment, I don't think I asked you when you had when you and Rat were on, but 
This one's called Ricks and Retirement. Essentially, it's when you're all cashed up. Everyone knows about this segment. It's when you're retiring, uh, you take your Rixies with you and you're perching up somewhere in the world. Uh, where would you, mm. where would the meatball take his Ricks eyewear and retire? Yeah. Um, I'm not that much of a beach person. So I'm not like, I'm not thinking Miami or Gold Coast or somewhere beachy. I, I love, I love the city. I think I love, like, that's why I love Richmond. So I'm thinking New York. I might open a cafe with Joe Watson, I reckon. He yes. might he might get into business with him and just go out to the Meadowlands and watch NFL uh, with me Rick's on. So, um, yeah, I think I'm a bit of a city city boy and love like a bit of a concrete concrete jungle. So, oh, that is a um, great answer. Yeah, I think I'll be up in uh, New York. <laughs> Oregon, I'll be visiting you. That's a cracker. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. one bedroom apartment. That That's- is great. There you go. The meatball in New York with the Rixies. At the hole in the wall cafe, maybe Job can expand. I think they yeah, are already. I think so. Yeah. Um, well said, mate. Now, our friends at Caps, uh, adjust that one, mate. We got the uh, Sonics cap there. The Caps clanger or the Caps moment. We've always got two. Um, adjust that for the big meatball scone. <laughs> uh, do you wear many hats? Are you a hat no, man? Never. There you go. You got the hat on. I got a bit of a. I don't know what it is. I think it's my ears are too low. Or yeah. <laughs> what, are you, what are you? I okay? don't know. <laughs> you look good in it. You look like a real yank now. You know. <laughs> I know. It's like my ears sit too low or me. My head's too uh, wide funny, or something. Mate. Yeah. I you, know. Some people like. I, I don't know. I have got a pinhead, so yeah. hats. I sometimes get a headache from hats. When I saw wearing backwards. <laughs> um. Now, the Caps clanger, we've had some crackers. We had, you know, Tommy Papley's clanger was the Caps clanger taking his mum's wedding yeah. dress to Mad Monday at 16 <laughs> years old and then rocking back up in the house and it was like all muddy. Dress. We're trying to get, we're chasing a photo up as we speak. Um, what is your Caps clanger? Have you got one? Uh, yeah. I'm, I feel like I'm pretty reserved, a reserved guy. So I don't feel like I have too many clangers, especially as an adult. But um, when I was at school, you know, our um, exams are very important, obviously, in um, year 12 and, and getting a good enter score and stuff. But I, I was shocking at English, like having to write like essays and write like for three hours in, in um, exams and doing doing sacks and stuff. I just could not get my head around. I'm like, why am I ever going to use this ever in, in um, adult lives? But I'm pretty good at remembering lyrics. Um, so I don't know, it's just... I don't know if it's just because I always have music on or something about like, I don't know how it, how it just rhymes or something. I'm really good at rem- remembering lyrics. And I remember we were reading a book. I can't remember what it was. And I remember like, I don't think I even read it, but talking about it in class, I think I watched the movie or something. I'm like, this kind of reminds me of um, uh, 50 Cent. Um, <laughs> oh, what was the song? 21 Questions. <laughs> yeah. 21 Questions song. And I'm like, all right. I thought this was pretty creative, but it wasn't. <laughs> So I, I wrote, like, you had to kind of, like, write it, but in a different style. It wasn't just, like, write what it is, like, be, like, a bit creative with it. And I wrote the lyrics for 50 Cent 21 Questions, but I wrote it in, like, the book, like, the book characters and, like, the book, like, what, like, the storyline and everything was. So I, like, handed in, thought I absolutely killed it. I'm, like, surely that's good as, like, being creative. And I remember getting it back, like, a couple of weeks later and I had to – um, meet with like our house, our house um, leader and stuff because it was plagiarism. Oh, <laughs> it was no, plagiarism. Really? Because I'd written pretty much like I pretty much just changed the like if I had her in the song, I'll just write like the girl in the name's name. Yeah, you'd replace her yes. with the name. Yeah, and I thought like that's pretty creative. And I wrote like it took me ages to write it and like to work out like how to do it. And then yeah, I just got pla- plagiarism and I had to sit sit down and do it all over again like that the sack for that went for like two hours oh. had to do that all again on my own it during lunch what year is this this was year 12 oh this is yeah, year 12 this is year 12 yeah so it wasn't the exam but it was like term two or something when you like you know the lead up stuff that you got to hand in and all that stuff yeah so that was probably that is well, oh, that's you're walking out with a head <laughs> bubble and you got the plagiarism <laughs> call yeah, I got plagiarism call I'm just like oh it's not really plagiarism but I all right, like I didn't, I didn't write the song myself because <laughs> yeah. I think they like went on the internet and like typed in it, all that, yeah, and it came up with like the lyrics for the song. <laughs> Fifty cents popping up. Yeah. Do you so, love yeah. Fifty Cent? Uh, yeah, I feel like oh well, early, 
early 2000s was probably when 50 Cent was killing it. And yeah, it was what we listened to. You know, 50 Cent, That's good, buddy, Akon, yeah. Chris Brown. It was kind of like that era. Mm. And um, yeah, so got done for plagiarism. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The meatball plagiarism, year 12, Assumption College. Yep. Ray Carroll would have uh, got you out of that one, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, he wouldn't have mind. He would have gone, it's all right. It's all right. Play on that's Saturday. Good, Captain. We'll, uh, we'll go <laughs> slip this one under the carpet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Now, you also get some more prizes, mate. Here's the Lifestyle Power Pack um, that'll be coming your way. This is not just it. Um, this is just a little bit of branding here from our friends at Milwaukee Tools. We can't thank them enough for their um, their support. But, mate, we've got you a little Milwaukee Lifestyle M12 three-piece power pack, um, and it includes a pruning saw kit and a contractor bag. You're going to get a Latin and floodlight, a compact blower. You're going to get your batteries and your charger. Um, this is pretty much perfect for when you go away on a fishing trip, camping trip. So if you're going away this uh, New Year's or this Christmas, uh, obviously you're training, but you get a weekend away, yeah. mate, when you're not yeah, on the weekend away. Yeah. Milwaukee <laughs> Tools have you sorted. I'm going to send you that in the mail. Yeah, thank you very um, much. So that is on the house there. They've sought me out for the new house, all the gun that i got to do. Exactly Don't do right. anything now. Our Milwaukee <laughs> Tools question, though, to round out is – how handy are you? I can get a glimpse. You're not too handy, right? <laughs> but what is the handiest moment of your life? What is something that you've done in life where you go, geez, that was handy? Handy, like building something? Anything, uh, yeah. Oh, geez. I am absolutely shocking at making things. Um, obviously, you so spoke about the build and not helping out at all. Um Oh no, <laughs> he's got nothing. Handy. I know when you spoke about fishing trips, I'm just like, I've I've been fishing once in my life. Yep. First week, first week at Richmond, you know, come down fishing. I'm like, I'm not gonna say no. You need to like meet everyone, bond with the boys, make new friends. And I was seasick the whole entire time we were out there. We were out there for about six hours. <laughs> Never oh, been camping and that's what it was Falls Festival when uh when we had to. And you just get well, there you go. If you're running um, back the clock, you handy. have the uh, Milwaukee Tools camping <laughs> kit there for Falls if Festival. I think it's a pressier thing. None of us, none of us ever get on the tools. And then my sister, she um, she married a handyman, so he's uh, he pretty much fixes everything at my parents' house. Or if I need something fixed up, I'm just like, mate, can you come and help me out? Because I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> hey. It's all good. That's that's yeah, I'm the same. Yeah. I mean, know I, your strengths and weaknesses. My handiest thing yeah. I ever did was probably I made this treasure chest in uh, I think it was year nine woodwork, <laughs> and it's the only thing that I've ever made. I used to yeah. I used to go to woodwork and I'd forget me lab coat, and they'd go, "Mate, where's your lab coat?" And I go, yeah. oh, "Fuck, I can't find it, mate. Yeah. You can't go to class today. You got to sit in the op. I go, "No worries, yeah. <laughs> just sitting there and playing that." You remember that helicopter game? Do you ever play yeah, that? Yeah, when you hold it you down, it goes up. Yeah. Goes up. Yeah, yeah, I played that. Played that for forty five <laughs> minutes. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe a flat pack. You know, I put a couple of like beds together and stuff. I had a I had a uh, I got an apartment still. It's in uh, East Melbourne. I had it on Airbnb for a bit. So I, I was an Airbnb host for for a little bit. Um, there you go. The meatball just greeting yeah, the uh, pre, Airbnb <laughs> guests. Yeah, pre pre COVID, it was it was actually pretty good. So. Um, Met like people from all over the world and stuff. It was actually it was actually pretty cool. But probably the handiest thing I did there was probably put a flat pack bed together. There you so, go. There you yeah. go. And and it was <laughs> handiest moment of the meatballs life, the flat packs. <laughs> oh mate. Well that's a wrap. Um, mate, thanks so much for your time. As always, we'll catch up flat out. We've got our yep. um we've got our NFL fantasy league in full flight. But in terms of um this season and and you know, all the hard work you've put in throughout the off season and then going into preseason, um have a great Christmas. Say good day to the fam. Hopefully, I'll come yep. around for a snitzel soon. I haven't seen <laughs> mum and dad in a while. Um, and yeah, big shout out to There's Oz right. as well. I haven't seen you, brother, but if you're watching right now and you've dropped 50, I mean, give me some of that because I'm trying to put 10 on. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, mate, thanks so much for your time. And uh, yeah, I'll, um, I really appreciate it. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks for listening to another episode of Tommy Talks, where you literally can't thank you enough for all your support. Speaking of support, our great mates, Milwaukee Tools. Without yours, we wouldn't be here. Milwaukee Outdoor Power Equipment gives you the power to clear, cut, and maintain the outdoors without the petrol headaches. No pull starts, no engine maintenance, no mixing petrol and oil. Book a test drive now at milwaukeetools.com.au. Milwaukee, nothing but heavy duty. All right, catch you on the next one. <laughs>